Hi, Jamie Pennebaker here. Welcome back to the Luke tutorial series. Today's topic deals with making custom dictionaries. Ryan Boyd put together and narrates this tutorial. He received his PhD from the University of Texas and is now becoming a faculty member at the University of Lancaster in England. Ryan is a world expert on Luke and a very smart guy. Ryan, take it away. Hi, I'm Ryan Boyd, one of the co-creators of Linguistic Inquiry and Word Count, or Luke 2015. And today I'm going to show you how to create and use a custom dictionary file for Luke. If you go to the Luke homepage, you'll find a link to the Operators Manual. And about halfway through the Operators Manual, you'll find this section, Creating and Using Custom Dictionaries. This section can tell you information about how to create a custom dictionary file, it shows you an example of what it should look like, and you can get other information on how to use wildcards and general tips and tricks, do's and don'ts, of creating a custom dictionary file in Luke. Now what I'm going to do today is give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how to create a dictionary for Luke. And probably the easiest way to do this is using Excel or some other type of spreadsheet software. And we'll make a new file here, and I'm just going to name this Emotions. Now Luke Dictionary has two sections. It'll have a header section and a body section. In the header section, we're going to specify what categories we want to capture, and in the body section, we're going to specify what words we want to capture and which categories they belong to. Now a header section always starts with a percent sign, and it also ends with a percent sign. So in between these two signs is our header, and this is where we're going to specify categories, and we're going to assign a number to them. So for this example, we're going to capture three different categories. We're going to capture an overall emotions category, a positive emotion category, and a negative emotion category. So this is the entirety of our header section. We can now move to the body section, where we're going to specify what words we want to capture, and then we're going to map all of those words to each of these categories that we've created. So let's say that we want to capture a bunch of emotion words like sad, happy, angry, depressed, surprised, and calm. Now because these are all emotion words, we want them to all belong to the emotions category, the total emotions category. And so the way we do that is by specifying the category number for each of these words. Now we also want these words to belong to more than one category. We don't just want the word happy to be captured by total emotions. We want to also be captured by positive emotions. And so we can do that by adding more category numbers to the subsequent columns. And we want these three words, sad, depressed, and, and angry, to belong to the negative emotion category. So we do that by uh, using the category number for negative emotions. So now we see the word sad is mapped to both the total emotions category as well as the negative emotions category. So this is the entirety of our dictionary file. We have the header and we have the body. Now we want to get this into some kind of a dictionary file that Luke can read. And so we're going to do that by first saving this file just so we can go back and change things and so we don't lose our work and then we're going to open up a text editor. Now I use Notepad++ for Windows. There are other programs that are similar to this for Macs that you can use. The reason I like Notepad++ is because you can see all of the characters, not just the letters and numbers, but all the tabs and spaces as well. That's a good way to double check and make sure that you don't have any issues with your dictionary file. So the first thing I'm going to do is just copy and paste the header into Notepad++. And you can see we have these uh, arrow marks here that denote tabs. Now we don't want those after the percent sign, so I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Now these blocks here, CRLF, this is a new line. This stands for carriage return and line feed. We don't need to worry about that too much right now. So what we have is our header section. It's properly formatted. Notice there are no extra tabs at the end. There are no spaces at the end. It's just the category numbers, a tab, and then the name of the category. Now what we want to do is we want to copy and paste our body from the dictionary over into this file here. 
And similarly, you can see there's no extra spaces. Our lines don't end with any extra tabs or anything like that. If they do, you'll want to delete those just so that you have only the words separated by tabs and the categories that each word belongs to separated by tabs. So this is our whole dictionary file right here. Now there are two different ways that we can save this in a format that Luke can read. The first is that we'll just save this as a text file. So I'm going to go ahead and find our folder we want to save it to. I'm going to save it as a motion dictionary and you can see the save type is normal text file or .txt. So one thing we can do is just save it as a txt file and then change the file extension from .txt to .dic. And we see when we do that in Windows, we get a little warning, just making sure that we want to change the file extension. Now, if on your computer you don't see your file extension, so you can see the emotions spreadsheet file, the extension is .xlsx, you can go to View and Options for your folder options within Windows and change your settings. So you can see I have this section here, hide extensions for known file types. This is not turned on. If I turn that on, you can see it hides these file extensions here. We want to turn this off. This allows us to change the extension from, DI, from TXT to DIC so that Luke can read it. Now a second way to do this is from within Notepad++ itself. So we can go to File, Save As, and rather than saving it as a TXT file, we can change it to All Types. And this allows us to save as whatever type of file we want. So it'll still be text on the inside, but we can specify our, our file extension as the .dic manually. So I'm going to save this as a Motion Dictionary. Too. And when I save that, you'll see a second .dic file will pop up here. Now if we go to Luke, we can load this by going to Dictionary and Load New Dictionary. And this will allow us to load up one of our two dictionary files. And we'll see this message that says the dictionary has been successfully loaded. And the second sentence is very important. If you make any changes to these dictionary files after you've loaded into Luke, you're going to want to reload it. So right now the dictionary in this form is loaded into Luke. If we make any changes to this file, we're going to want to save it and then make sure that we reload it in Luke so that it updates with those changes. You can also help check and make sure that your file has been read correctly by going to Options and Categories. And what you'll see is that the three categories that we specified in our dictionary show up here under the Categories menu. If you're not seeing all of your categories, usually what that means is that you have an issue with extra white spaces, or perhaps you're using plain spaces instead of tabs to separate your, your category names from the category numbers. And as a side note, you can also see more dictionary examples by going to Dictionary and Get More Dictionaries. And in here, you can see several examples that you can download, and you can open all of these in some kind of a text editor like Notepad++, and you can see uh, just how they're laid out in more complex types of categories that other people have made and so forth. And with our dictionary file loaded, we can then go ahead and analyze whatever text we want to. And just so you can see that it's working, we're going to go ahead and analyze a bunch of TED Talks real quick. And you'll see it's processing through them. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it just so we can see some of the results. And we can see that our three categories show up here. And that's it. That's how you create and use a custom dictionary file for Luke 2015. If you have any questions or if you have any issues, feel free to send me an email at info at luke.net. Or you can just search on the web on the Luke website. There's also a forum where you can ask questions directly. And we'll get to those as quickly as we can. Thank you.